the all 21 current members and to vote for the person you think deserves to be the 22nd. And now let's go over and meet tonight's special guest, David H. Kamansky. Dave, welcome back. Thank you. Oh, it's great to be here. Delighted to have you with us. Good to see you. <clears throat> the only thing Dave Kamansky seems to dislike about his job as the number one man at the number one brokerage firm is that Merrill Lynch is going to make him give it up in three years when he turns 65. Dave has been a loyal member of the Thundering Herd since 1968 when he became a broker in Forest Hills, New York, rising through a variety of posts to become CEO in December 1996 and adding the title of chairman four years ago this month. He is tonight making his second appearance as my guest on this program. Dave, many investors are sore at firms like Merrill Lynch for failing to warn their customers that a bear market was coming. Are you guilty as charged? Well, I think we and the industry could have done a better job in calling the top, particularly in uh, uh, the technology sector. I think we did a pretty good job in uh, talking about the, the broad market in general. But, uh, you know, it's, it's on, on the way up. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to know when to stop recommending them, and it's very difficult to call on, on the way down. Uh, if it were that easy, I think there'd be many more wealthy investors. A bear market brings out the conspiracy theorists in our midst, and as you know, there has been a lot of suspicious reporting lately about the ethics of securities analysts. The question is whether they make recommendations because they believe the stocks are good purchases, or because their firm has an investment banking relationship with the companies. What do you do at Merrill Lynch to make sure that's not a valid complaint? And do you think it is a valid complaint? Well, I think it's obviously a very controversial issue. Uh, it's probably a valid complaint depending upon where you're sitting. I can tell you from our point of view, uh, we go to great lengths to protect uh, our analysts from having undue influence from other parts of the firm. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the reasons that we have kept our research department independent within our organizational structure was precisely that reason, to protect uh, their integrity and to isolate them from the influences that might otherwise be placed upon them. It is clearly a management problem, and it's an issue that I think the management of every firm, particularly of the investment banks, has to address each and every day and protect themselves against why don't analysts give more sell recommendations? I think they do. I think they do it cloaked in, in, in a nomenclature that you really have to be familiar with the firm and the street to, uh, to see it. I mean every downgrade means sell? Well, it certainly doesn't mean buy. I think every <laughs> downgrade clearly uh, is, is warning the investor. Uh, and and I, I, I believe most investors uh, realize that uh, when they see a downgrade in the stock, clearly this is a warning signal, and uh, I think that's much akin to uh, uh, to sell recommendations. When you were last with us in 1999, we were just moving toward the new legislation that greatly opened the opportunities for financial services firms mm -hmm. to expand. You haven't done much merging since then. Why not? Yeah, are you referring to uh, Merrill Lynch in particular? Well, that's what that's what where you, you get your paycheck each week. No, that's that's <laughs> absolutely true for a long time. <laughs> but we 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 model uh, combinations of Merrill Lynch uh, with just about anyone who we might acquire, who we might be able to merge with as equals, or who in fact might want to uh, uh, acquire us. I feel very strongly that our position, our job is to create value for the shareholders. We have not seen a combination that, in our judgment, could create greater shareholder value than we can as an independent organization. So until such time as we have uh, a reason to feel that we can create that more value in another form, we're going to remain an independent company. But you're not saying never. I never say never about anything. <laughs> what advice would you give to scared investors at this point? You know, I, it, it's, a, it's a question I thought a lot about. It obviously, was going to, I knew, realized it would come up tonight. I, I would suggest that people try a really uh, revolutionary new approach to investing, and that's called common sense. <laughs> It'll uh, never fly. Well, <laughs> it, it, it might. If, if people sit back and think about it, the really pertinent question, the most <clears throat> important issue, is the question, if I invest in equities today, 
will they be higher 12 months from today? Uh, I personally feel that without question they will be, but for all the reasons you spoke about earlier in the program, uh, rate relief, tax cuts, uh, the economy becoming stronger later in the year, certainly by the fourth quarter we would expect the economy to turn up. Uh, so I, I certainly feel that going at the, the end of this year, the beginning of next year, we'll see the economy much stronger. The market will clearly discount that, will clearly be an early indicator of that. I would expect the markets uh, are probably in a bottoming pattern right now. Uh, and sometime later in the summer, I think we'll see it turn up. No one will stand up and ring a bell and say, this is the bottom, this is the turn. Uh, and smart investors have to anticipate it. And I clearly, on a dollar cost averaging basis, would, would strongly recommend that people begin to acquire high quality equities today. You think they should buy low? I think they have to be uh, <laughs> courageous to make money in the market. Let's bring in our panel, so I'm with Mary Farrell. Dave, uh, tax cuts in all forms have been a major topic of late. Do you think there are any chances that the capital gains tax will be cut? I don't think there's very much focus on that, Mary. I think there's much more focus on, on the brackets. I think that's where the administration is focused. I think secondarily, obviously, the estate tax would be a question. Uh, unfortunately, it appears as though uh, we are so polarized along pa party lines that it's becoming more difficult. Uh, I think the country barely needs tax stimulation, and I certainly hope that we get it, and get it, as you said earlier, retroactive to the first of the year. David, we had a bankruptcy today, a Pacific Gas and Electric uh, Utility, which people might have thought would have been a conservative place to have fixed income money. And of course, there's a lot of debt in the system, and so a lot of investors own financial stocks, and what advice would you give them? in terms of being concerned about the level of debt and the default rate, uh, which is currently around 6%, which is historically high. What, what kind of advice would you have for investors in terms of analyzing or looking at their, their financial stocks? Actually, I think surprisingly, the credit cycle has been more benign this time uh, than I can recall it uh, being in the past. You're right so far. Uh, unfortunately, this bankruptcy today harkens back my mind back to the early 70s uh, with some of the problems we had then. But I truly feel that the uh, the financial system, the banking system, uh, and the credit cycle in general uh, is much sounder today than it has been in other cycles. And I I, I hope that the uh, bankruptcy uh, in California was an isolated event that was due more to lose uh, reference to ease than anything uh, economic. Mm -hmm. David, uh, Merrill Lynch has a very impressive cadre of financial consultants and brokers. Uh, for a retail investor with some new cash to invest, uh, what if you were in their position, uh, what sort of an asset allocation mix would you recommend in this time? Well, as you know, uh, our, our analysts are, are publishing ideas all the time. We have model portfolios from a client's point of view or a prospect's point of view. Uh, I would strongly urge them to seek professional help professional advice and guidance from, in, in our case, uh, uh, certainly from Merrill Lynch. Mary might uh, uh, think of another firm to ask. Uh, but uh, being a successful investor is difficult. I think it takes professional help. Uh, I certainly have the type of stocks that I like to invest in, but I think the important thing is, is really what I said earlier. Investing takes courage. And if someone waits for, for, for an announcement that we're at the bottom and it's turning, it's, you're going to miss it. Dave, we're nearly out of time. You just said that small investors need professional help. A constant complaint we get is that firms, including Merrill Lynch, give less of that now to very small investors. What's your stance on that? We, we are going to great lengths to build the capability, to build the infrastructure, to improve our service to small investors. Uh, and we clearly hope to be able to offer uh, our, our market offerings to investors of all sizes. But so you don't mind the big accounts either? And we wouldn't mind that either. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dave Kamansky. Thanks to our panelists. Hope you'll be back with us again next week. Then my guest will be a man whose financial judgments can move markets. He's John Myers, the boss of GE Asset Management whose hundred billion plus in assets make him one of the world's biggest investors. Let's see if he can help us make our first billion dollars. Meanwhile, this has been Wall Street Week. I'm Louis Rukeyser. Good night.
Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser is produced in association with Rukeyser Television Incorporated by Maryland Public Television. Made possible by Deloitte & Touche, who's equally at home with steel and silicon, with wheat fields and cyberspace. For professional services, the answer is the people of Deloitte & Touche. By A.G. Edwards. Providing a full range of personalized financial, retirement, and estate planning services. A.G. Edwards. Trusted advice. Exceptional service. By Oppenheimer Funds. Every year, millions of Americans place their financial futures in the hands of one mutual fund company. Oppenheimer Funds. The right way to invest. By the Kaufman Fund, a small company aggressive growth fund, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. For a printed transcript of this program, send $5 to Transcripts, Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser, Maryland Public Television, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser is produced in association with Rukeyser Television Incorporated by Maryland Public Television, and they are solely responsible for its content.